Hello everybody, you'll never guess who we're going to meet this week, our social robotics friends. Introduce me to these guys, tell me about them, how do they work? Uh, well this is Paro, Paro the harp seal, Paro is from Japan, and this is Nao, who's a humanoid robot, uh, and originally from France. So um, these are two of the robots that we've been using in our various activities. Yeah, so Paro is a robot used, um, one area is in the use with people with dementia. And Paro, you wouldn't think it, but there's about 85 different sensors in here. This is a very sophisticated piece of machinery. As you can see, it's responding to my voice. It's looking at you with these big dark eyes. And it has little whiskers here that even they have sensors in it. So if you speak to, if you touch or speak to Paro now, you should get a response. Hello, Paro. Ah, oh. he's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, he was developed in Japan by an inventor called Shiobatu, Dr. Shiobatu. Yes. And is there many parallels in the world? Uh, There's quite a few. There's not many in Ireland. This is probably one of maybe three or four in Ireland. Um, but it's widely adopted in Denmark, America, France, Australia. Very enthusiastic. Um, and in fact, we're traveling to Denmark very shortly to go and meet the distributors of Paro in Europe uh, at the Danish Technological Institute. So we expect to be seeing herds of Paro or flock schools of Paro, maybe uh, when we go to Denmark. Fantastic. You can say a bit about now. Now isn't functioning very well at the moment. <laughs> oh, Hello, I'm now. My internet address is 192, 168, 0, 177. There were 722. I can't move anymore. Some of my motors are too hot in my right leg. Please let me rest for a while. Oh, <laughs> hey now. Some of your motors are very hot in your right leg. <laughs> That's very, very um, disturbing. Spooky. <laughs> uh, but notwithstanding Now's um, overheating, Una, uh, Now was developed by SoftBank Robotics. Uh, it's a collaboration between uh, Japanese and uh, manufacturers and French designers. Um, now retails at about uh, 9,000 euros. And through our uh, Prospero project, the Pedagogy of Social Robotics and uh, Social Professions in Europe that we concluded last year, we were able to buy two of these. Um, they're essentially a companion or social robots that um, are used to teach children mathematics of languages. One of our postgrad students, Debbie Woodward, is just about to write up her dissertation, her master's thesis, on her research with um, now in five primary school settings in Sligo. Wow, fantastic. Where she taught, where, where, where uh, now help teach children how to pronounce French words in third class. It was very interesting research. Now is also used to um, work with children with autism and can be used in older care settings as well. So it can engage in uh, being a bingo uh, maestro, can help you know older people with maybe memory loss, uh, engage in reminiscence activities as well to jog memories of the past. Um, and yeah, we, we, we're really hoping that uh, we can attract more postgrad students um, to ATU Sligo to uh, work with now in various research settings. That is just fabulous and I've met now a few times at our engineering fair over the mm -hmm. last few years at our expo and I know I met you recently at your workshop that you had uh, and you had some health uh, professionals in. Maybe tell us a bit about that. Yep. Yeah well we had a workshop with a, a visitor from the University of Liverpool, Andrew Tibbles, who's um, has an interesting job. He's the designer in residence in a hospice in Liverpool, and he's looking at end of life care. So we ran a very interesting workshop with um, colleagues from St. Angela's, uh, from John's Futures of Welfare class, uh, some from the hospital, including people from the um, uh, from the uh, palliative care team, and a couple of our designers as well. So. We explored, spent about three hours exploring all different aspects of robot design. I think it was very good and we're hoping to do more work with the hospital in the future. Great. And I know colleagues that are listening to you and looking at this uh, uh, video, uh, you know, there's so much going on in this space. And right across the university, I know some of our robotics lecturers will be interested. 
our HEAL Research Centre. So the crossovers and the interdisciplinarity between, you know, the social sciences side, the science side and the engineering side is all starting to merge now, which is just, just fabulous. It is, in a, and it's fantastic to have this, uh, what we call the intersectionality of various disciplines. Perry and I are perhaps the only two social scientists who are members of HEAL, uh, primarily because of our research in social robotics, we could, we could see the dovetail uh, synergies that would accrue to us and to HEAL if we joined them. Um, and yes, we would, I think the future will be looking at a, a, a new type of pedagogy, which a Prospera project was about um, developing, that will incorporate the likes of Megatronics and robotics colleagues and students. So we have a, have to look, we've really got to look forward to something really fascinating happening over the next number of years in this area. It's fantastic and just it's Great going to, to be a fascinating uh, new world as we move forward and I'm sure there's certainly plenty of coffee conversations you can have with colleagues mm -hmm. now going forward so I'm going to finish with I always like to ask <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself that you'd like to share with colleagues. I'll start with yourself John. Thanks Anna. Yeah well I go way back uh, to the 20th century. Um, I got my teeth in academia back at, yeah, in, in Leeds and um, university there. So I've been teaching in higher education in Ireland and Britain for about 30 years. Uh, originally a political scientist and went into social policy. Got interested in the whole area of futures and foresight. Um, I was asked to develop a module on the future of social policy for a, a master's degree in the built environment and architecture uh, in Leeds many, many years ago. And from that moment, um, I yeah, obsessed, I suppose, in forecasting foresight and future studies. This man here, Perry Sher, gave me my opportunity to teach future forecasting on the social care practice degree program here at IT Sligo back in 2004, would you believe? Um, and since then, yeah, I've uh, had a great rapport with the students, and Perry and I have gone on then to see enormous opportunities right up to including social robotics. So, um, yeah, nearly Fantastic. 20 years here now. Fantastic. Yeah. And Perry, uh, a little bit about yourself, yeah. anything at all now? Well, well, I've been here in Sligo since 1997, so I got my 25 years up uh, last September. And uh, I came here as head of the Department of Humanities. That became Social Sciences, I think, 17 years as head of department. Then a few years as head of faculty of Business and Social Sciences. And then three years out as the project manager for the CUA and then for the last two or three years as Head of Student Success. So a whole range of different management roles, but I suppose all of the way through, I've always been interested in research as well. And my interests uh, include social robotics with John and technology, uh, but also the sociology of food and eating. So I've done a bit in that area and working on a, editing a book there at the moment on pubs in Ireland. So with, with a few contributors from, from ATU, and then I'm also interested in the whole area of academic integrity and plagiarism and so on. And I've been looking at that for a number of years, and that has become a really big issue now. So between the pubs, the robots, and the academic well, integrity very, uh, and the student success. <laughs> Listen, I think this could go on, but I know Aidan is looking at me, and we have to say goodbye to everybody. So I'm going to close now and say thank you for being our guest. Thanks, and goodbye from Paro and Bye from now. Yeah. <laughs>